the conversation. Look! The... the stone! It burst open! It's... it's... Globa? What are you... what? Mara? Ah, I see the chili mince cornbread buns have been served. Master! Granny, look! The, the Snow God statue looks just like Guoba! Oh, indeed it does. After all, Guoba is the deity you've been searching for. God of the stove. Guoba... Guoba is a god? Para. You asked me if a sufficiently festive atmosphere would be enough to reawaken the stove god. And my answer is this. Yes. And no. The stove god has always been a deity with great affection for the people, and who acts in response to their desires. To him, the heart's passions and the heart's desires are not the same thing. Passion can be a technique, a skill, something derived from experience. But desires, they are deeper, more innate. They are the heart's strength in its purest form. Masterful chefs is wonderfully exciting, but it is more an exercise of passion than of desire. And passion alone will not suffice to reawaken the stove god from his deep slumber. But just now, when Kuching ate this dish she had longed for, a deeply held desire was fulfilled. As well as receiving an answer to her question, she also gained something much more precious. A moment of poignant nostalgia so vivid, it felt like she was right there alongside her grandfather. The enormous power unleashed by the fulfillment of this desire resonated with the stove god's statue and caused it to manifest once more the form it took in the past. Of course, the stove god himself is not contained within the statue. <laughs> the true stove god has been here with us all along. Ah. How does it feel? Seeing a statue of yourself from your glory days? Ah, look at him. Still so majestic. Glory days? Wait, what happened? Did Guoba used to be different from now? Oh, yes. Back in his day, your Guoba was once the patron god of the soil. But all the wisdom and power he had then... He has since surrendered to the soil itself. A god surrendering their power to the soil. I have heard this turn of phrase before, but what does it mean? The kinds of trials and tribulations that a land can face are far more than you could imagine. Droughts, floods, torrential rain, hurricanes, earthquakes, tsunamis, fires, and plagues. The threat of disaster will never fully disappear from Liyue. Even woes that have never been faced before in history will come to pass in the future. Such things affect you mortals far more than we Adepti, with our immortal forms. He once walked with you over the barren plains until you arrived at last at the harbor. He joined you in building your dwellings and lighting the stoves. It was his hand that lit the very first street lamp of Liyue and brought the aroma of cooked food into every household in the land. You mortals no longer remember him, but back in the age when you did, he was the closest of all the Adepti to the common folk. Machosius, god of the stove, born from a spark when stone struck stone. He was a god with a great love for humanity and their well-being. Millennia ago, the people sought to expand their city. They built a dwelling on the plains and called it the Gwaili Assembly. The stove god cared greatly for the people, turning himself into minions who went into every home, fostering food and solidarity alike. 
Alas, their home was taken by a flood. The waters ravaged the Gwaili assembly and forced the people back south to Liyue Harbor. Though the distance was not far, the journey was plagued by a terrible storm. For a dozen days, the Adepti stayed by their side. During this time, the stove god cooked an ancient delicacy, flatbread with a meat sauce to stave off the cold and damp. Fit for those on the move. Centuries later, disaster and plague arose once more. The stove god would appear no longer, for he placed all of his power into the land itself to quell the calamities. His power expended and his wits greatly reduced, thus his body decreased in size. By the time he parted ways with us, he wasn't even the height of a human. He told Rex Lapis and I of the dishes that bring joy and of the secrets of the flame, then went into the mountains and entered into a long slumber. The stove god departed and Guoba was born. When he awoke, he ate the chili men's cornbread buns placed on the offering table by a young lady in yellow. Though he did not remember the past, he was profoundly moved and decided to follow this young lady thereafter. The stove god had quietly disappeared, but the vendors rose early to hawk their wares. People went out to buy goods, lit their stoves and cook food, just as they had done every day for as long as they could remember. In Liyue, things have always been this way. Nature provides, the mountains rejoice, we are blessed by heaven's good grace. Years have gone by. The world has transformed. But our way of life survives. Fame and fortune is only a season. It is the moment that we should embrace. Past meets present. Heritage becomes legacy. Long into the future may we thrive.